Good evening and welcome to San Diego at Large. Tonight we come to you from Encinitas. Despite all of the development in the area, Encinitas has kept a kind of small town atmosphere about it. And where else within a block and a half radius could you get yourself a futon and a lottery ticket, buy yourself some Ensenada style chicken, or chomp down on a biblical burger? San Diego at Large with Larry Himmel. Encinitas has been described as that place where the city meets the country. So it only makes sense that you would get your news from the city and your eggs from the country in one convenient location. The Encinitas News and Eggery was opened almost four years ago by Bonnie Jo Bechtold. And if you're wondering which came first, the newspaper or the egg, well, they both came at the same time. What is some of the favorite reading material of the people of this area? Uh, they like the arts, they like music, and they like politics. Well, how many different newspapers do you sell here? Uh, I have over 30 different kinds. Different languages? Mm-hmm. Some statewide, some international. Le Monde, out of Paris. The London papers. And you get them with how, how quickly now? Some are uh, just a day behind, some are a week or so, it varies. Do you find that a lot of the people that are transplants here from uh, other parts of the country want to stay in touch with wherever they came from? Oftentimes it's people that are moving to that area, they want to get an idea, or they uh, just want to touch base with their old stomping ground, that sort of thing. Here you'll find some of my favorite magazines, like Trout the magazine for trout and salmon anglers. Or how about the latest issue of Canoe, in case you have a little dinghy. Then of course I always read Workbench. This month they're featuring a provocative black and decker centerfold. Yeah. Oh, great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I come down here every week to pick up my old hometown paper, the Chicago Tribune. One look at the headlines here, and I remember why I left in the first place. Hello. I'm Ray Ortiz, San Diego Registrar of Voters. I'm supposed to remain publicly neutral on all candidacies and ballot issues, but I'll let you in on a secret. If there was an election for the craziest show in San Diego, I'd have to vote for San Diego at large. Do you ever stop to think about the people who produce TV commercials? I mean, they must have the strangest ideas of what real people are like. Spotty glassware, for example. To watch television commercials for dishwashing detergent, you'd believe there is no more humiliating experience available to a human being than to be caught with shutter watermarks on your goblets, and that only a real lowlife would subject family and friends to this mental health hazard. He's in shock, doctor. He was having dinner at Kathy Stanton's place when she put this spotted glass in front of him. I can't believe it. That woman is sick. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my client has been unable to work for six months. Six months because he saw this spotty glass at Kathy Stanton's house. Ooh. I know how to tell if she's really a witch. We'll look in her dishwasher and check her glasses. I've just got one question. Is spotty glassware now as big a crime against society as waxy yellow buildup on your floors? No need to fight, ladies. Larry will be back. Oh, man, watching these highly paid jocks drives me to drink. Ah, drives me to eat, too. I gotta get more chips. These look pretty stale. I'll do. 
Well, you know, I was a pretty good quarterback when I was in junior high school. Heck, the Chargers had me as their quarterback. I'd take them to the Super Bowl. You know, I should have bought some more Oreo cookies as a doubleheader on today. Come on, guys, let's do something right. Just one thing. All right, throw it, throw it. Throw it. Oh, Butterfingers, what are you doing? Hey, get him, get him. Oh, you guys drive me crazy. What are you doing? You guys are professional athletes. You're paid to do that. Uh-oh. -uh. Boy, they would just give me a shot. I'd do better than these chumps would. I swear, I know more about quarterback. Come on, coach, give me a shot. What do you say, big guy, huh? Come on. Where? You, Wait come here. What? Split Where right, 989, F rub sneak on red. What, what do you say? Shouldn't be a problem with all the great receivers the Chargers have out there. Let me see. The play was split right, 989, F rub sneak, one. Okay, I think, one. I mean, I hope red is one. Gee, I can't believe how big these guys are. I gotta act like I know what I'm doing. This can't be for real. This can't be happening. Those linebackers look like they'd rip your head off just for looking cross-eyed at them. Boy, I hope my hands are in the right place. You would have told me they weren't, huh? I don't want to do this anymore. Where's the receivers? Wait, no, fellas, I was just kidding. This is just a dream, isn't it? Wait, block that guy. Hey, wait, hey, hey! Oh, oh that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I'm blinded one eye. What? What was that? I'm blind in one eye! Oh, my helmet was turned the wrong way. I was looking through the hole in the helmet. I think Wilson oh. gets it in the right spot. Boy, what happened? How'd the Chargers get the ball? See you! Oh, maybe it's not, fellas. Right. That was really awesome, dude. Of course, Encinitas is the flower capital of North America. And if you've ever received a rose, most probably it was grown here. These aren't kosher flowers. These are the coker flower growers. This is a family business, started 20 years ago by Wolfgang Coker, who is now assisted by his son, Eldon. 14 million roses are produced by the Cokers each year, making them the largest single rose grower in Southern California. But with land value in the area skyrocketing, I wondered how much longer flower growing would be feasible in Encinitas. Yeah, that I thought about quite a few times too. Uh, you see, I bought the land uh, when it was $12,000 an acre, and now it's worth uh, 200, they're talking about 260 to $280,000 an acre, you know. If I would have to pay that kind of money uh, a lot of the land nowadays, it wouldn't be economically feasible to grow here. So the future of Encinitas as the flower capital of the world may be doomed. Yes, it might be more likely uh, near Santa Maria. That's where land is still cheap, and I just bought in February uh, a second up or uh, another operation in San Marcos where land is only $30,000. The Cokers also own 25 acres in Mexico near Rosarita, but the Encinitas location remains their best for selling, particularly with its proximity to the freeway. Business comes from a variety of sources, just about anyone with a resale number. You know, flower stands, flower shops, uh, sell the wholesalers, people who sell the flower shops. Um, we ship flowers around the United States, wholesalers. Ship to Arizona quite a bit. With five acres of rose bushes in this location alone, can you imagine how many men each single rose bush got out of trouble with a dozen of these? We'll be right back. Tell IBM yes on the merger. Helen, get Tip O'Neill's office on the phone and cancel tomorrow's working lunch. Twenty million is my final offer. Take it or leave it. As an upwardly mobile, goal-oriented, high-powered single woman, I didn't have much time for a social life. That's why when I decided it was time to look for Mr. Wright, or Senior Vice President Wright as I call him, I did the only thing someone in my position could do. I called Yupdates, the first yuppies only dating service. Yupdates made discreet inquiries into the backgrounds of all viable candidates and conducted personal interviews which focused on future earning potential and they made projections of future compatibility based on all available data. While they did all that, I was able to work here at my desk and concentrate on the important things in life. This morning they recommended a future husband for me and I accepted their offer. For PR's sake, I decided to close the deal myself. 
I hope he looks as good as his stock portfolio. Yup dates. When marriage is just another merger. Well, hello again. We're running a special today at my place. Can you see it? All-you-can-eat fried chicken. It comes with mashed potatoes, gravy, biscuits, and for dessert, Mrs. Wilson made some of her great wish pie. I call it wish pie because every time I have one piece, I wish I had another. Once upon a time, there was a young farm lad who lived on a farm, which, of course, is where farm lads usually live. He was a happy boy, and he loved the country. I love your country. He loved the cows. I love you cows. He loved the trees. I love you trees. And he loved to go barefoot and feel the mud squish up between his toes. I love you mud squishing up between my <laughs> toes. But most of all, he loved Hilda, a beautiful honey-haired girl whose father was a wealthy merchant. Now, I've come to ask your permission to marry the fair honey-haired Hilda. I await your answer, sir. The answer was not long in coming. Oh! oh, the boy was heartbroken and certain that he had lost his true love forever. But Hilda, who had grown quite fond of the lad, had a plan. Father doesn't like you because you're just a country pumpkin. That bumpkin. But if you could become rich, do something impossible, and prove your bravery, I'm certain he would give his consent. Willing to do anything for the hand of Hilda, the lad quickly set off to the nearby city, where it so happened that the king, while taking his morning stroll through the marketplace, was set upon and bitten by a chicken. Ouch! Oh, the king sentenced the chicken to life in prison. Fortunately, the young farm lad chanced to pass the prison that very afternoon. As he did, the chicken reached out through the bars and... Hmm, a rat tied to a note. Of course, it was little more than hand scratches. I am a magic chicken. Help me escape and I will grant you three wishes. This was indeed a stroke of luck and he wasted no time digging into the prison wall to free the chicken. In no time at all, he was inside. Then, by placing the chicken on his head and fluffing him up, he was able to walk out past the guard who thought he was an Indian. Hello, Chief. How, Kimasabe? Moments later, they were safe deep in the woods. You've done well. Now I shall reward you. What are the three wishes you wish to wish? Well, first, I wish I was rich. Oh, my, I get a lot of requests for that one. So be it. The chicken took the lad to a large stream where she instructed him to swim to the deepest part and return with three shiny stones from the bottom. In the boy jumped, sank like a rock to the bottom, and snatched up three shiny stones. I got them. Are they diamonds, rubies, or something like that? No, they're just shiny stones. You can throw them away now. You're rich. How come I'm rich? Simple. I just bet this woodsman that I could find somebody nutty enough to dive into that cold water and bring up three shiny rocks. You win, chicken. Here's my golden axe. The golden axe did indeed make him rich, and off he ran to show Hilda. Wonderful. You've completed the first task. But can you do something impossible? Oh, it's easy. I'll do that now. And I'll put the axe in the bank in my name. Hurrying back to the chicken, the young lad made his second wish. I wish to do something impossible. Going to the highest cliff in the kingdom, the chicken said one word. Jump! The lad said one word. Geronimo! And did. I say, what's the big idea? I thought I was going to do something impossible. You did! You just jumped off a 700-foot cliff and lived. By the way, we won another gold axe. Quickly returning to Hilda. Now all I have to do is something brave and we can be wed. Yes. Once more, going to the chicken, he made his third and final wish. Something brave? All righty. And with a wave of her wing. Hey, what's the idea of turning me into a chicken? Because you're going to get a lock of over hair. Well, fine. What's the idea of turning me into a chicken? Snipping a lock of hair off and over would be a mighty brave deed, right? Right. But what's the idea of turning me into a chicken? The ogre would be suspicious if he saw a young lad enter his castle with a pair of scissors, wouldn't he? Sure, and eat him up. But why a chicken? But if a chicken entered the ogre's castle with a pair of scissors... <laughs> it suddenly, suddenly became quite clear. Not even an ogre could be suspicious of a chicken. Off he raced for the ogre's castle and bravely went inside. Home goes her! Home! A chicken with a pair of scissors. You suspicious? 
No. A short time later, the ogre sat down for his evening meal, and when he lifted the lid off of his serving platter, out sprang the chicken, snipped off a lock of his hair, and sped away. That's the first time a chicken ever gave me a haircut. But I'm still not suspicious. His three tasks accomplished, all that remained was to have the magic chicken change him back into a lad. Unfortunately, the chicken, having granted the three wishes, had flown the coop and was nowhere to be found. The clock in the steeple was striking five, his time was up, and there was nothing to do but return to Hilda as he was. Don't let the feathers fool you, Hilda. It's me. I've got a lot of ogre hair, and that proves I'm brave. Ogre hair or not, you failed. We cannot marry, for you're not brave. Farewell forever. Alas, it was true. He had failed. For as everybody knows, it's impossible to be brave if you're chicken. And the poor lad lived as a dumb cluck ever after. Business was pretty good here in my place today. I guess we're going to have to make that uh, all-you-can-eat chicken dinner a regular thing. People just, uh, excuse the expression, gobbled it up. They especially like Mrs. Wilson's wish pie. Come to think of it, I sort of wish I had a piece of it right now. Don't be a vimp. Stay with us. Our final stop in Encinitas will show you at home just what a highly competitive industry the television business is. I'm here at Central School, where they have their own TV program, and it's called Central at Large. What a coincidence. Here we are today with two kids playing with Transformers, although pretty soon they'll find out which ones were worth their money and which ones weren't. Central at Large is an outgrowth of the GATE program here, the fourth through sixth graders in Mary Wiley's class. It's a half-hour program produced each week and shown on closed circuit throughout the school and includes interviews, fake commercials, skits, and two characters named Clyde and Claude who for some reason seem slightly familiar. Claude, uh, do you think it's time we get a job? Sure, man, but where? Maybe at the media center's media center is. Sounds awesome! Let's go! While the producers of Central at Large freely admit modeling their show after San Diego at Large, they have come up with some original segments. And I figure if we borrow an idea or two, well, that will just make us even. Tomorrow! I gotta change my underwear! <laughs> and now, with our official San Diego at Large show clothes from Encinitas, here's Clyde and Claude. Uh, thanks for watching the show tonight, and have a good night. Hey, that was my part. Oh, that was my part. My part. Uh, that was Pays me. She said a condor in music is a hot right now, but not as hot as me. So honky dogs ain't cheap no more, and I don't dance for free so long. Dancing in this ain't cheap no more, dancing don't come free. 